I heard Courtney Brown talking on my local radio station about this thing that he called remote viewing. And believe me, I was very skeptical. But Courtney and I had one thing in common. We both studied chaos theory and fractal geometry and were attempting to use it in social science. He was a political scientist. I was a social scientist. And I thought, well, he has a degree. He probably knows something. And he wouldn't be just making this up. And I got his book, Cosmic Voyage. I was very skeptical that it would work. But I thought, hey, I can at least go take the course and make my mind up for myself. And what I found, to my surprise, was that within, within a day or two days or three days, not only myself, but everyone in the class was getting results that they could literally describe a picture that they couldn't see ahead of time um, that was hidden in a folder behind our backs. The picture could even be outside the room. And that you could not only describe a picture of it, you could even hear what was going on at the target location. You could get a sense of the ambience, the, the concepts and the colors and the, and, the, and the dimensions. And this was a real shock to me. My rational mind wasn't so happy with this. I mean, I was open to the idea it was possible. But like many of you, I just couldn't understand how it works. And to be honest, I still don't think I totally understand how it works. I don't think anyone really does. Just a brief, brief background on remote viewing. Uh, most of you probably know that our military developed a program in remote viewing back in the 1970s. It's really a product of the Cold War. Uh, the Soviets had gotten to this type of information back in the 1950s, and had called it psychotronics. And people like Skip Atwater and others who were in charge of security at the Pentagon were really concerned that the Soviets could now penetrate into secure uh, military installations without our even knowing about it. So they wanted to see if they could develop a defense against remote viewing. They found there really was no defense against it. If it exists, it can be viewed, because it creates an energy signature that is imparted into the matrix of space-time. But nonetheless, they thought, hey, at least we can train our own viewers. And they, they got people like Ingo Swan and others to create their own program, uh, starting at Stanford Research Institute to develop a US government remote viewing program. Well, these, this program continued for 20 years. About $20 million, at least, were put into it. Uh, it seems to have been largely declassified. And at least in 1995, a number of the people in the program who are no longer working for the US military decided to start teaching it on their own. And you might be familiar with some of these people, Paul Smith and uh, Lim Buchanan and others. And um, Courtney Brown was one of those people that learned from some of the military people. But nonetheless, the, the program was declassified. The protocols were made public. And now you too can learn the magic of remote viewing. Now, in my view, it isn't really remote viewing, as you may have uh, gotten an inference from Ron's introduction. It's not really remote viewing because we know from 100 years of quantum mechanics, one of the most rigorously tested scientific theories in the history of science, that we live in a non-local universe. Particles that have come in contact with each other can stay in contact with each other in some sense. They can stay in contact even if they're separated by billions of miles. So this suggests the idea of non-locality and the idea that information can travel through kind of a subterranean passageway that is not directly observable through conventional mechanistic scientific instruments. The real importance of RV is that it shows us that there are alternative pathways of information flow that are not easily detectable. They're part of what's called subtle energy science. And this is very important because it suggests a whole new paradigm about how we can live and how we can uh, provide for ourselves on planet Earth without creating such a massively destructive effect on the environment, on ourselves, and uh, create political and social systems that have to keep basically going to war to keep themselves going. We know from lectures yesterday by Tom Vallone and others that work is being done in free energy systems. And what I'm about to show you is just one small part of that whole area which I like to think of as subtle energy science, which shows essentially, folks, that there is a lot of power that we all possess that we're not using. Uh, power does not reside in governments and in large organizations and in, in vast corporations. It, it's with us. We all have that power. But the problem is, from the time we've been very little, that the abilities that we have have been drummed out of us. Uh, we've been told not to be who we really are. We've been shaped into shapes that we aren't really. And we lose our power as we grow older. And what I really love about the whole area of viewing is that it gets you in contact with that power again. It's a very subtle power, but it's omniscient, it's omnipresent, and it really can change your life. It can show you your own potential. It can show you the potential of our planet 
and of course, for most of us in this room, the potential of our galaxy and our, our universe in the long run. So we need to connect to who we really are before we can connect with the larger inter intergalactic community. That's my view on it. So really, the way we've looked at it at the Institute for Resonance is that remote viewing is a form of resonance frequency of vibration. And when, just like a radio, you tune in to the proper signal, you can receive all the frequencies, all the different radio stations that exist in the universe or on our planet. For example, right here in this room, all the radio stations that are broadcasting, all the TV stations that broadcast, all the cell phone conversations and all their types of electromagnetic radiation are right next to us, but we're not hearing anything, at least most of us are not hearing anything right now, because we're not tuned into that frequency. But what we learned from the remote viewing program is that the subconscious mind, which is where the signal comes from, the subconscious mind seems to be tapped into what Ingo Swan called the matrix. And this became the, the title for the movie, The Matrix. An archi vast archival system that transcends space time where every bit of information about everything resides. Apparently, our subconscious has some ability to tap into this. And anything that exists anywhere in space and time, it doesn't matter if it's in the past or the future, or if it's next door or on the other side of the planet or the solar system, your subconscious mind can tap into that information, convey the information to the conscious mind, and if everything works properly, you can write it down on the page, and lo and behold, you've described something that is non-local, that your five senses could not have physical access to. But the information came through your awareness, through this non-local matrix, through your body, into your pen, onto the page. Now, in a real sense, it's not really viewing, it's sensing. It's a form of resonant sensing because um, you don't just see things, as viewing would suggest. You actually hear things, you taste things, you sense ambience. You can even get a sense of concepts. In some cases, in the military program, they were able to read classified documents off the desk of the NSA. <laughs> and as someone made reference to in a previous lecture uh, the day before, uh, they were um, even threatened with arrest because they, there was, people thought there was a security breach until they could prove that they had been in Stanford the, the whole weekend. So this can be, at, at one level, very accurate. Now, in terms of your own ability, it's like a musical ability. Some people can whistle a tune, some people can play an instrument, and some people are virtuosos, and it's like that with RV. Everyone has varying levels of skill, but everyone can do it. So let me just show you a few slides to exp show you the theory of why it may work, just briefly, then I'll show you slides of viewing sessions that we've done at the Institute for Resonance over the past eight years, and I think you'll find these quite interesting to see how just a beginner, an average person can make contact with this non-local mind. And then in the last hour or so, we're actually gonna have all of you do viewing with practice targets, and you can test your own skill. And uh, we're gonna show you our UniView system. It's a, an abbreviated system which we, we developed so we could teach it within uh, an hour or 20 minutes. I, I've, I've used this with high school kids um, it's a very effective system. That gets about 70 or 80% of the data uh, of, as the full uh, military protocol system. But it's very effective in the short run, and we'll do that in the last hour. So let's go ahead with the first slide here. <laughs> 